Mark Bailey is graduating this coming Saturday with his master's in architecture from Miami University. I want an applause for that. He has accepted a position as an intern architect at Levin Porter. Hey, I work there. And plans to start working on Dayton in June. His, his thesis aims to break down the barriers of contemporary amusement parks, bring roller coasters, rides, and attractions to the urban context as generators of activity and interaction and excitement. Come on up, Mark. Everybody welcome Mark. Thank you, everyone. Uh, first of all, before I begin, uh, can I get a raise of hands of who all has ever been to an amusement park before? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, great. Okay, so if you're familiar with architectural theory, you're familiar with a gentleman by the name of Le Corbusier. He wrote a book called Towards a New Architecture, a manifesto on how modernist architecture is this new wave into the future. So today, this is Towards a New Amusement Park, Mr. Disney tearing on that wall, um, clearly referencing some historical pre previous things. Uh, so we have Mr. Walt Disney here standing next to Epcot, uh, his master plan for the, the new plan at Disney. So Disney World, it's an awesome area. There's tons of excitement. It's a fantasy-driven world, um, and it's brought together you know, millions of people from thousands of different countries all over the world, but it is a completely introverted community. It is only for people that can afford to go there, and it's um, truly introverted. It's a gated community. Um, nowadays, you're, you're forced to pay upwards of $200 a person to get into these places. Um, and they're just not, they're, they're not areas of excitement or urban generative um, or fun. So the, while there are a lot of fun and I enjoy going to them myself, they're not realizing their full potential of how they can be an even better amusement park. Um, people that go to Disneyland often refer to Main Street USA as being the perfect example of how America should be built. We should have all these beautiful streetscapes, um, tons of great facades, and everybody should always be on the street and having fun at all times. Um, well, they're only doing that at Disney. They're not doing that here in Dayton. Um, they're not doing it in Cincinnati. They're not doing it in Columbus because they suffer from PDD, post-Disney depression. <laughs> it's a psychological thing. It's proven. It's a real thing. I'm not making this up. It's psychologically proven. Um, because these people are leaving our communities to go to Disney World, to go to Kings Island, which is fine. It's a great form you know, of entertainment, but it's not the only way we can do amusement parks. We can do them better. Uh, Coney Island in New York, one of the first amusement parks that's truly an urban typology for people in Brooklyn and Manhattan to break apart from the, the cramped urban life and to go to a beach and to hang out. As you can see, it continually got more crowded over the years as it got more popular. Um, we had rides like the Steeplechase and people would hang out on the beaches and it was a great time for people in New York. Um, but all of those places have been abandoned. There's three amusement parks within a 50 mile radius of here that have been abandoned. One is still standing if you're familiar with Americana in Middletown. Still there, totally abandoned, just left to die. Um, unfortunately, it's precedent, Coney Island and Cincinnati is still surviving and still doing well. Um, but we need to push this to the next level. Disneyland is an entirely gated community, as I had said. There's one entrance to the park. It's an island unto itself in Anaheim, and it's literally just a mothership that landed in Anaheim. Um, but Coney Island in New York, for example, open to all people, um, open to walk through, to free to pass through, and you can pay for rides or attractions or whatever you want to do. Um, but it's truly a park. It's not an urban kind of, um, it's not just a, you know, something there by itself. They're doing this in Germany. There's this place called Landschafts Park. Um, they're doing this in several other places where you can go zip lining. Uh, you can do scuba diving, rock climbing, bike riding, and it's all in this urban environment from this adaptively used um, coal plant and steam um, and steel factory. So we, have, so we have all these great, awesome uh, attractions. We have roller coasters, we have free fall rides. They're awesome, but they're only being used in these internal communities. So why can't we use these things? Uh, why can't they break this barrier? Um, and why can't they once again become the true potential that Coney Island in New York originally had set for it? We already have a good base for this. A Riverscape is an, off, is an awesome area where people can get together at all times. Um, there's interactive fountains, there's fireworks shows. Um, you can ride your bike down there. Uh, it's a great urban area, but it's not always active because there's not a permanent program that always feeds it. So um, why not bring something that's you know, exciting and constantly bringing activity like an amusement park or the functions of an amusement park um, and bring them to Dayton. So we have roller coasters that are actually downtown. They're actually interacting with um, the people there. <laughs> Am I getting some, yeah. <laughs> um, so they're generators of excitement that's always occurring. Um, and they're also fun. This, uh, 
This might be a little harebrained and a little far-fetched, but it is a television advertisement they're doing in Bahrain right now. Um, so these things could actually become, you know, forms of public transportation and use certain ways <laughs> to transport people around the city. <laughs> so for my thesis, um, I decided. <laughs> so for my thesis, I decided to choose a site um, right adjacent to Riverscape, right up the block here. Um, and try to connect Island Metro Park, Triangle Metro Park, Kettering Fields, all these really exciting areas together um, into this amusement park that will also feed into the city and create all of this entertainment and excitement. So here's my proposal here. Um, <laughs> so, thank you, thank you. Um, so on the north side, we have a roller coaster that can transport you to the south side of the site, uh, serving as kind of a prototype form of transportation. Um, free fall rides that are in the park um, that are also observation towers. Um, there are um, hotels in the park, so you can actually stay there. There are uh, to townhomes, so you can live there um, if you so choose. Because um, there's nowhere in the world where you can actually live in an amusement park. Why is that, why is that true? Why can't you live there? <laughs> Unless you're crazy like me, you want to live there. So, <laughs> um, so there's a beer garden, there's, um, there's this promenade, um, the Midway, there's all these retail facilities for local vendors, not just for cotton candy dealers um, but for, and, and souvenir shops, but for actually local people. There's local coffee shops there, um, all of these areas. There's um, rides that are right on the river, right, al right alongside the bike trails. Um, and then all of this, as you can see in the top rendering, spills into the urban fabric of the city. It's not gated. It's not boundary, uh, boundary. So you can walk there. You can walk there throughout any time of day, like a public park, um, and enjoy yourself in any, in any certain way um, that you please, because there's all different types of things. They're already doing this in Japan. Japan doesn't have a lot of uh, land mass, so they're bringing these things. They're slamming rides through buildings. They have free fall rides on office towers. All kinds of crazy stuff, and they're already doing it because they're reduced land mass. Um, so what's the, what's the hesitation? Why aren't, we, why aren't these things you know, revitalizing our urban centers that unfortunately are being dispersed? So if you are interested in this proposal and you'd like to talk funding, meet me outside afterwards, <laughs> uh, and we'll go over that, so thank you. <laughs>